mention uh, fabulous Fred, Fred Cook's, uh, some of his achievements. He, he played in the VFA right through the 70s to the mid-80s, kicked over 1,300 goals. And there was seven times, Fred, where you kicked more than 100 goals in a season. And I've, I've seen footage of, of one moment when you kicked 100 goals and lots of people ran onto the ground, patted you on the, the back. What, what, what did that mean to you being, you know, the, the, the role model of the, the VFA? More importantly, it was an obligation to the kids because they were the most important part of the crowd. You know, and I can remember on one occasion it was planting six inches of mud and it raining at the end of the game. I had my face cut open and my dad was at the race saying, Fred, get inside. The doctors want to sew you up. I said, I can't leave these kids here, you know, because they come from that background that you know, I was there only God and light at the end of the, end of the week. Uh, I never smoked cigarettes in front of the kids. I had a... With a Channel O, Channel 10 uh, cameraman, don't put the camera on me when I'm having a smoke. I'll do anything you want down the track. And, and they were pretty good like that. Now that brings back great memories of Phil Gibbs calling and uh, the, 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 the VFA footy, which was great. Your idol was Teddy. Um, but when did you, do you remember when you first met Teddy? Um, oh, I followed him as a kid from, I went to football with my old man, sort of on the beer cans, that sort of thing. But um, um, I'd had it. Got his autograph probably only about 500 or 1,000 times. Got into trouble with Mum on Thursday night. When you think VFA, you think of this man, Freddie Cook. Now, this guy was an absolute genius in front of goal. Uh, 309 games, 1,394 goals. Wow. And he was just a, a Port Melbourne out-and-out champion. He's one of those guys you would actually go to the footy just to watch Freddie Cook. How would you, how would you summarise that style there, kid? Uh, well, it was straight, but, <laughs> but he loved it, didn't he? On the field, off the field. Everyone yeah. knew who Fred Cook was. And, yeah. and it's been a bit of a battle off the field, yeah. but you know, he, he's still forever got a smile on his face. Yeah. Freddie Cook. Was an what, you watched it on the Sunday afternoon, didn't you? Yeah. On Channel 10 on Channel with Phil Gibbs. Yeah. This is about his fifth to come up. Pretty deliberately. One of the personalities of VFA football, Fred Cook. Lines them up and he's put it through for another one and Port go to 11-10 with Oakley on six goals. Holding down towards Cook and Elliott. Up goes Cook, can't mark it, out towards Goss. Goss is caught, hand passes over here towards Cook again. Cook screws around and an open goal in front of him and another one. Oh, and watch Freddie Cook take this. Oh, he'll take this. Yeah, Elliott slipped at the very vital moment and Cook have really given Oakley the, this quarter. There's a kick by Cook and another one's on the board. His seventh goal and Port Melbourne move to 17 goals, 14. Oakley still on that eight goals, 12. Up towards the half forward line, and Cook comes out again to take the mark. He's taken the mark at centre half forward. He's kicked eight. But now here's Cook guiding the ball on its way. It's another goal, and that's his ninth from Port Melbourne's 19th. They go to 1915 with Oakley on eight goals, 13. Long kick down towards Cook. Oh! <laughs> to each other. He's kicked his tenth, has he? Yes, he has. And Port Melbourne moved to 20 goals, 16. Yeah, Ritterman's off. Well, there's the mark and Cook again. Well, if he kicks a goal here, this... Fred Cook. Lines him up, it's on its way, and it's a goal. And Port Melbourne... Goes... Has the chance to score his 100th goal. There's the replay of Cook coming out. See him brought down there, and that was a free, for sure. That was on the slow-mo on O. As Fred Cook comes in, lines them up very deliberately. It's not a bad kick, it'll get the distance. And that's it, and look at the kids come onto the ground. Fred Cook's 100th goal, and the fourth for uh, Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne go on to 4-10 with Geelong West on five goals, 11. Fred Cook being crowded here by the youngsters at the moment. Look at them moving out onto the field. And this is the second time we've seen this happening uh, in VFA football in the last three weeks. Radojevic was the last one. Now it's Freddie Cook of the Port Melbourne side. Now we'll take you over for a quick report while this is going on at our number two uh, remote area for the Brunswick and Campbell. All away, it bounces right for Fred Cook. Beautiful sidestep, slam into the goals, and he puts it through for another one to the VFA. 13 goals, 8, 86. But uh, Breeze chips in in front of him. Breeze up towards the uh, centre half forward zone. And Freddie Cook staying there, pulls in the mark.
Cook uh, does it pretty easily too when he moves towards the ball. He's only about 30 metres out from goal, has every opportunity of scoring with the VFA at the moment 14 10. The Ovens of Murray League 13 goals 6. Fred Cook puts the ball on its way. It's a goal, all right, and that takes the VFA to 15 10. Ovens of Murray League 13 6, and that was caught deep into attack. In towards Freddie Cook. Cook is there. You saw then into the full forward zone. Freddie Cook's there. Yes. Oh, what a mark. Cream right in the goal square. Almost quarter time. Forwards home. Up they fly here. Cook. Well, how do you just well, bang it up towards Fred Cook? Is making the lead and he's marked. Now, this is both what uh, Ted and Bill said earlier. Well, Evans putting Port into attack. Cook. And I think, uh, well, he appeared to push Buse out. What did you think? Thanks, pal. Well, here's Fred Cook. Right in front of goal. And it's a pretty good kick. He's put it through. That's his third goal. Sam Holt was held. Coming out of it is Cook. He slips it over the shoulder. What's the result? A goal. That was Cook's third goal. Holt Melbourne. Fred Cook on his own in the goal square. Takes the mark and kicks a goal. Nine goals for Fred Cook. He's kicked 125 goals for the year. There he is. Century goal kicker supreme. Fred Cook. The idol of the crowd. And Fred says, go back. What a personality. What a personality. Oh, there he is. Oh, gee, he frightened me for a moment. I couldn't see the Dax. <laughs> anyway, there he is. Pretty happy about it all. The personality of the game. And what did he end up uh, kicking today? Eight goals, uh, or nine goals altogether. Now let's go over to Bill Weyer Award for the um, John Guy at Thorn Radio Cassette. Puma Australia with the football boots and bag and four and twenty pie award of forty dollars. Right, Bill Thompson bears uh, Fred Cook. If we can hear them, take you into that. Come on, kids. There's uh, Fred asking the kids to quieten down for a moment. Where are you, Lou? Lou Match? Well, I don't think we can uh, wait for that. I think the Sandringham players are in the dressing room, so let's take you over now to Eddie Malay and to the Sandringham dressing rooms. Congratulate okay. Cherry Wilkins uh, and his this, uh, Fred Cook side. now, the captain of Port Melbourne, go, uh, saying like a few words. I'd also thank a very good friend of ours and mine personally, Ken Mitchell from Puma, and a little mate of mine, Robert, who's watching home on television, couldn't make it though. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rod. OK, Fred Cook, the captain of the uh, Premiership side, Port Melbourne. Let's take you now inside the Port Melbourne rooms, uh, and we take it to Craig Kelly. There it goes on its way. It's high in the air. The siren about to go any tick of the clock. It's a mark needed for Port Melbourne if they want to get there. And what the umpire says, he's paid it. Been a, uh, may have been a free in there, really. As Cook puts it on its way, and it's four points on the board, and Port Melbourne have hit the frame. They move on to three goals. And uh, here's Fred Cook, right in front of goal with the wind behind him, only 35 to 40 metres out. A study in concentration, a low trajectory kick through the centre. So Owen now goes for his kick in towards that right uh, forward pocket. Fred Cook puts a strong pair of hands on the ball to pull in the mark. Well, Cook so far has kicked three goals. And I reckon about his fourth coming up. Now, if he gets this one, it'll make it reasonably safe for Port. As he puts the ball on its way, goal umpire moves across slightly, but it's a goal. And Port Melbourne move on to 16-15. Paran, 13 goals, 9. Fred, we're on air at the moment. That's a pretty uh, hopeless uh, situation for Queensland. Would you agree with that? It is, but it's a magnificent uh, situation for the VFA side. I believe we're in front simply because we're teaming together and we're prepared to get the hard ball. A lot of the viewers wouldn't realise that uh, out here it's very windy conditions and it's swirling sort of a wind. You know, you can't predict where the ball's going to go. And it's only the player that's prepared to go and get the hard ball that's going to come out on top today. And I think if we can do that for the next half of the game, we'll win quite comfortably. Right. Hey, Fred, thanks very much. Back to you, Phil. I know, and uh, there's Freddie with his... Well, that's it. So now, until next Sunday, this is Bill Jacobs, Ted Henrys, Ian Gibbs, and Ron Asbury, and Philip Gibbs wishing you all a very good afternoon and taking you back to the studio. It's Sunday, it's Sunday, it's Sunday, Sunday. Yes, sir, baby. How about Fred? Okay, well, there's the mark now going to air, and uh, there's...
there's certainly going to here. No doubt about that. A beautiful mark, Fred, taken, as we said, six minutes into the second quarter. Uh, some Oakley has beaten Sunshine. Results going through now. But, uh, Fred, somewhere here's the uh, check. Pulled out a dollar note. That's no good. <laughs> $50 with the good wishes of Gillette and also Thanks, this gift pack. Right. It, it must be a bit of an omen, Rob, because I, uh, I didn't shave before the match today, so to Gillette I'll certainly uh, put it to good use tonight. Thanks very much, Rob. Okay, Fred. Well, just, just before you do go, uh, we want to know about this ankle because uh, it did get a lot of attention. Moments, uh, maybe if these uh, young boys can move aside. Can you just move aside and have a look at the ankle? There it is. Now, Fred, was that... Was that... Uh, oh, <laughs> poor Freddie. No. It, it is important though because our viewers at home it was a sensational incident in the game only uh, moments before the game and there was a lot of people a lot of people viewing today to see uh, that hundred goals Fred I was probably more shocked than anybody so I, I've never strapped my ankles uh, for 10 or 15 years and it's the first ankle injury I've had that you know I went up for a mark and I come down awkwardly and went over and so it proves the point that I suppose I should have my ankle strapped from now on because right. uh, you know hopefully it'll be right, It'll be right for next week. I hope so Rob. okay Freddie good on you round of applause for Freddie Cook boot finally it's Ryan under the left boot up towards the center half forward position looking for Smith up high Freddie Cook their captain number 24 Fred Cook only some 30 meters from goal almost directly in front there it is on action replay good grab by Fred Cook got under the fall of the ball Peter Carey his immediate opponent was caught out on that occasion trying to get back but Cook with a big strong pair of safe hands gives himself an opportunity for just 30 meters out and almost dead in front Cook with the kick now Drop punt on its way. Umpire doesn't move. That's the first major on the board for the, the forward zone with his fourth kick. It's not a bad old roost either. Towards that centre forward zone and caught. It's pushed into the ball. Actually tripped into the ball and it's a good mark by Cook. So he has the opportunity to come in for his 98th goal. Fred Cook kicked one behind so far today and ready to go for his shot for his 98th goal. So he's lining them up at the Williamstown Road end of the ground. Both sides on two goals, three. And Cook now makes it three goals, three for Port. He goes for a bit of a run. There's the kick and lead by uh, Freddie Cook. He's out in front. He can't take it on this occasion. But he now he, get, he recovers beautifully. Shoots in towards goal and through for a point. He's missed it. He's missed his 99. So there it is. Cook stays on 90. Eight at this stage. field was Douglas Cook hung back and got possession, dispossessed immediately, gained it again, snapped for goal and it's two for goal. 99 goals to Cook. Port Melbourne and grabbing him as a Bayer. He'll do something of the ball. Decides the handball to Annenson, the big man, back to a Bayer. A Bayer now lining up the goals, shoots it in towards uh, Freddie Cook and a beautiful one-handed mark to Cook. What a great mark, Phil. Yes, a great mark by Fred Cook. Um, and that could be... One of the big marks of the day. Fred Cook lining them up. The kick towards the Williamstown Road end of the ground. Kids coming from everywhere. As Cook comes in for his 100th goal, he's hooked it. And he's put it through for the minor score of one point again. That's the third... Light again. Up to the full forward spot. Cook and Douglas Cook. Cook's in good form today. He did good work around the forward line. And here we see it. To a Bayer. A Bayer to Wilkinson. Getting it up and watch how Cook out manoeuvres his opponent Douglas here. It's a great mark. And here he lines them up. Directly in front. And it's another goal to Port Melbourne by a 4-1. It's a Herbert trying to grab the ball, but Goss comes through beautifully and sees his teammate O'Reilly all by himself. He plays on across to Fred Cook, who's also by himself. Cook goes into the open goal, and it's a big one to Port Melbourne. A great goal to Fred Cook. From the Fitzroy Street end of the ground, but he'll go for the long kick. It'll drop into the middle of the goal square. Cook trying to back into his opponent, does it beautifully, and has taken the mark. Kicking it up towards full forward, and Cook. At long last, he had to get into the act. Cook races across here. The Town uh, tried to cut across in front of him. Cook with strength screws it around. And it's got a bad screw. He's put it through for another one. So that's Cook's fourth goal on the board today. Going out of going back in. <laughs> but I think he summed it up pretty well. And Queensland having a lot of difficulty with the swirling win in uh, trying to mark the ball. Ian, the statistics... Okay. Five is Russ of the VFA. An adaptable player. Nearly a mark there to Gilmore. Cook picks up. 
Abaya up the cook and he got it his back. Oh, all the drama of Australian rule football you'd ever need. And it's five points of difference, and we are now in the time on. Yes, it's right on the 25 minute mark. Fred Cook moving back very, very slowly. He's kicked three goals, six so far in the game. So Fred Cook lines them up from a 45 degree angle. Puts it on its way, he's hooked it, he's put it through. Now it's coming back. Yes. Come on, it's a gun. It's a goal. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. It's taken away by Christo. Christo gets it to the siren. For half the line line, but here goes the siren. It's all over. And I'll tell you what, Bill, that must be a great relief to the Port Melbourne supporters, the way it's come out. I think so. They would have been on edge, on the razor's edge, all day today. And I think it might be pertinent to mention now, Phil, that I think their greatest inspiration came from Buster Harlan. Off the ground after a heavy knock, hadn't been firing, but he started to, to lift his game, and that makes the difference to the Port Melbourne team. And the Port Melbourne little fellows were able to wrest themselves away from the tackles. Ebaya was one who all day had been swamped. Right. Uh, and culminating in that goal of Fred Cook's, which was absolutely superb judgment. I can see Fred Cook going up the race, the cup being uh, taken off the ground. Rob Asper is in the dressing rooms. Well, we have Freddie with us at the moment. Fred, congratulations. Thanks, Rob. It's a magnificent effort by our players to come back when we're so, you know, all, all, the situation looked lost at three-quarter time. And Bryce, he asked us for that extra effort. And um, it's magnificent the way the players lifted after being down for three quarters. But, you know, while we're on here, we must congratulate Coburg for the magnificent fight they put up. You know, for three quarters it was their premiership, but premierships aren't won until the final siren. And, you know, we, we hung on and we won it. And I'm very proud of the, these young players, particularly young players, that haven't played in a premiership before. It's so fantastic for them, you know. We try to instill them. There's only Stretch and Buster and a couple of others that have played in premierships before. It's a new team here. And the way these blokes applied themselves, and an enormous, it hasn't hit home yet, but I'm sure in the next few days it will, Robert. It's a magnificent feeling. it's going to hit home very shortly. Freddie, congratulations. Uh, wasn't, wouldn't, it be, uh, wouldn't be your greatest day, but uh, I think that's Gary Bryce with the Premiership Cup. There's the boys now. Well, has put it through for full points. Onto the ball to take the mark. At the centre of the ground, seven minutes into the last quarter, O'Reilly's kick to Cook. In front of Biffin. And a good, strong mark by Fred Cook. Do you think Ray Biffin's given up the ghost, Bill? Ten goals down? No, I don't think he's given up the ghost, but he just simply didn't punch on that occasion. He attempted to outmark him. Here it is on replay. And there's Biff too far behind, and the ball uh, locked in the sure grip of Freddie Cook. And that's another goal to Port Melbourne. For Port supporters, the sight of Freddie Cook in the goal square is always a reassuring one. He joined the club 11 years ago as a ruck rover, but after suffering a heart attack in 1972, was given the job of full forward. He hasn't looked back since, and today one of the VFA's best-known footballers was aiming for the goal-kicking record. He equaled the record with his third goal for the match in the third quarter. The goal came from a controversial free paid to Cook in the goal square after some pushing and shoving. Mm. While some of the crowd didn't like it, his supporters were happy. Inaccuracy on his next two shots brought up points only, but the record finally came up after Cook took a well-judged mark and made no mistakes about the kick. Cook finished the game with five goals. And Marie Sparkman for Eyewitness Sport. Seesawing all day. A swan now gives the opportunity for Port Melbourne to go forward. Cook is there out in front and takes a good, strong mark against two players and I'd suggest with blood still uh, in his nostrils after a very heavy whack in the face in the first few minutes of this game. Fred Cook has one point on the scoreboard. Court kicking 3-1, 19 so far, Preston 3-4-22. There's the kick by Fred Cook. Umpire moves across and it's four points. All right, there it goes towards that centre forward zone and again uh, Cook outmanoeuvring his opponent using a lot of strength which is typical of the Fred Cook play has taken the mark only 10 metres out from goal Port Melbourne starting to get right on top 
Cook right in front, kicking towards the northern end of the ground. And he's put it through for another one to Port Melbourne, taking them under five goals, three. Is it? Down gives Jim Christo the chance, there's his kick, screws it back in towards Fred Cook, setting himself, but he's got the mark, second grab. Good, strong mark there by Fred Cook. Beautiful mark. To the applause Even. of uh, our commentators, <laughs> Ted. Well, Bill, you were the one clapping. Well, Bill Jacobs was the one clapping then. It's <laughs> marvellous what a dobber will do. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how you get dubbed in, too. Yes. Fred Cook now, already kicked three goals. Lines up the big sticks. It's another one. Oh, it's news tonight with Tony Banks. Swan it is. Takes the ball back towards uh, full forward. Fred Cook is there from behind, and I think he might have got the mark. Yes, the nod from the up. And uh, how do you like playing in front of this bloke? Oh, it's all right. we, we combine very well together. We, we've been serious for one minute. That uh, Shane... You couldn't be serious for one minute. Well, I'm trying to be now. <laughs> but uh, what Shane does try and do, he get the ball down quickly. He was nearly in the, in the season. Right. And when he does mark the ball, he gets up and has a look downfield. And he gets it moving. And that's, that's what good centre-half ball is all about. And Shane just developing week after week. And you know, who knows what, what the, the future holds for him. Has anybody mentioned Norm Gosling? He's taken the easy way out in hospital to, today. Norm, you're laying back in bed there and all your mates are down here. Well, you know, just so that you're here in the next couple of weeks. A young girl, Tracy, she was badly burnt. She's sitting in the children's hospital, I think, Trace. We hope to see you in the preliminary final too, love. Just keep your chin up. Good on you, Freddie. All right, well, look, we won't hold you boys up anymore. Congratulations on today's effort. Uh, as Gary said, congratulations also to Geelong West and Gary Hamer. It was a great effort for them. You know, playing them in a grand final. Well, Harold Martin, the uh, former captain and coach of Preston and at Foster Graves, has given us a wave up here too. <laughs> and look at his into. All right, uh, Rex Hunt. I don't suppose you should have done that, walking off the ground. I don't mean signing autographs. I said during the call that uh, Geelong West seemed to be playing as well as uh, they were allowed to by the Port Melbourne side. And any fight of the Port Melbourne kids who um, announced the Best Player Award, the Seedle Puma Best Player Award, they did this for you. Back to you, Phil. Right, uh, Rob. And there's Cookie looking up here. All right, Freddie. And away he goes. Well, Freddie will have some fun too tonight. OK, you've seen the rooms of the victors. Let's go over to the vanquished, and I'd say in complete contrast, we'll take you to... ...the ground, a bayon, a short pass, and a free kick ball by himself, and he'll make no mistake about this one. Under pressure, that's his first goal for the match. Another for Port Melbourne. Commences at 10am, and we've got the barbecues and uh, entertainment right through the day. I think all we right. all endorse that, Bill. OK, play goes on as we have uh, opening hour. Still down. As Cooper is third, going towards goal now. Port Melbourne looking really good. There's the kick down to the full forward position. Fred Cook is there. A little bit of a nudge. And Cook has the mark. Fred Cook going for goal 100 for the season. Let's have a look Freddy at that, one, that Mark. I thought that uh, Fred Cook uh, edged his opponent out then, but he certainly took that cleanly there. The personality player of the VFA, number one, Fred Cook, lining up for goals 100. There's the kick. And it's a goal. 100 goals to Fred Cook. And have a look at that crowd coming onto the ground, Phil. Well, a great uh, tribute to Fred Cook. He's one of the most popular players in football today. And uh, that includes league and association. The fellow who's always ready to pull up and sign autographs for kids. And look at the kids coming from everywhere. They're coming from the lake end of the ground, right down here towards the Fitzroy Street end of the ground. And uh, Fred Cook, a player who's done a lot for VFA, Ted Henrys, certainly deserves that tribute. Well, it certainly does deserve that tribute. As you said, one of the most popular players in the VFA, not only this year, but over the 10 or 12 years that Fred has been playing. A player who's kicked Brendan out... Brendan Kavanagh at the true centre-half forward position goes in looking for Cook. This time, it's, uh, he's got in front of Eve once again, and I wouldn't think he'd miss this one. He's changed his game and got in front of Ede, or as Ray Shaw says, uh, Ede was probably uh, doing all the damage by getting in front of Cook. But this time, Cook is coming right back, and I wouldn't think he'd do the same thing again. The concentration plus this time as uh, he puts it through this time for his sport first, and Hoberg's fifth goal. Oh, it's good. As he comes back to the pressure of the, the final situation, it's pretty easy 
to go out to, against ordinary size during the year and kick a bad for when everybody's on top. But people that don't play the game don't realise that how much pressure is out there to actually win and do the correct things all the time. But full credit must go to Ede, the fullback that played on me. He's a very tough opponent. He, he, he stuck close. He was very defensive all day. And it was, I was just, I suppose, a bit lucky to get away in the last corner and kick a couple of goals on him. But uh, I don't know what Bryce has said to the um, Channel 10 viewers, but uh, we only had about two or three good players in the, for three quarters. And I think I could just have that gut feeling in the last quarter when it started. These, the rest of the team just wanted the molders one and play, they remember back to the 1980 Grand Final, we were in a similar situation and we came back and you know, they all deserve a pat on the back and next week's a different proposition. That's a, that's a fine compliment to lead. What happened in that uh, first quarter there? Walk there? Now he lines up the goals, but it's offline. Fred Cook is waiting for it, positions himself superbly. Well, I, I've got to say, this is one of the best games of football that I've seen Fred Cook play as regards positioning himself. Well, unfortunately, his kicking is letting him down, but he's positioned himself in front superbly today. We won't miss this one. Fred Cook yeah. now. Look at that concentration. There's the kick. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Uh, a behind. Pass to Swan. Swan lines him up with a long kick downfield, but again the distance. Cook tries to mark it. I think he's taken a sensational mark. That's the mark of the day for sure. 26 minutes into the third quarter. Let's have a look at this from Buff. Oh, that is a mark. What do you think of that, Harold? Oh, great mark. You know, for a chap 35 years of age to do that, I, I couldn't do that when I was 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he really missed it. But he's got it through to take Port Melbourne in 13 14. Freddie, congratulations. Thanks, thanks very much, Rob. Um, what did it mean to you? Oh, yeah, it's the most uh, anxious five minutes I've spent in my whole lifetime out there in the last quarter when uh, I thought Preston could have come back. They're kicking their goals easily. Do you think you can get them quiet? Pardon? Do you think you can get them yeah, quiet? Yeah, hang on. Hey, can we have a bit of silence? One, one minute, come on. Come on. One minute. Please. 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 Come on. Just give us one minute, please. One minute. All right. One minute. I think you got Buckley's hope, Freddie. All right. <laughs> Fred, I, I just want to ask you, you got Buckley's hope, my friend. I've tried it before in previous yeah. years in Port Melbourne. They love celebrating. Tell me, Fred, you, your kicking earlier today was terrible. Um, you know, there's no there's no excuses for bad kicking. But, Is it uh, nerves or what? No, I had a bad groin last week, and uh, I, thought, I thought I got over it. And the first minute of the game today, I tore it again. And I thought, well, it's silly in a grand final worrying about uh, having injections and things. I've done that in the past and ended up pretty ill. And uh, I was trying to favour my, my right foot. And uh, when the uh, come half time, it was a desperate situation. And, and Stretch Anderson and a few of the other guys that have been involved in the last couple of premierships said, look, just forget about it, kick straight through the ball, and, and thank God it paid off. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just so proud to be part of the, with these young players. It is players. fantastic. All right, Fred, Gary. Oh. Gary Bryce. <laughs> Again, congratulations to you and Freddie Cook. It's been a fantastic. Time now for the VFA report. Presented by Fred Cook. We're at round 10 of VFA football this afternoon for the Mitsubishi Motors Cup. The conditions aren't exactly uh, ideal. It's very windy outside and I don't think we have very much trouble launching a wrought iron hang glider at the moment, but I suppose we better get straight into... I, I know it was one of your gags, Sam, and, but you're always pinching from somewhere else. VFA First Division ladder as it stands after round nine. Tandingham still on top, undefeated. Preston, with uh, I stood there and watched most of the game, actually, uh, and I, I did play, even though I didn't kick any goals. But they've got Gabby Nolan's got some very good players. McGee's an excellent player. Tony West, back from Essendon. The cat, Vinny Katodja, all playing well, and I think Brunswick will win that match. Uh, other matches, Sunshine to get out of the top of Northcote, Waverley to defeat Berwick, Caulfield to beat Mordialic, and we'll see all the scores in the nice to be Phil and Bruce, uh, the situ uh, situation is, of course, they haven't got a key forward up there at the moment that's on top and putting pressure on the on the opposition backman, but I was a little bit disappointed. When... Hoy, Hoy with a very heavy ball, puts it right into the goal square, and Fred Cook standing there has taken the mark. Dead set in front of the goals. He's kicked one, two so far, Cook. I don't know, uh, we were very impressed with Fitzpatrick uh, a fortnight ago, but uh, it's probably the idea, the conditions are against him, and it might be an idea to put the experienced Fred Cook back at full back, and, uh, full forward rather, and bring uh, Fitzpatrick out on that flank. Anyway, uh, Cook 
gets the kick in and he's put it through for full points. It's a towards Stenzi Tenses. Tenses now grabs the ball, passes across here towards Kavanagh. Kavanagh downfield to Swan. And Swan now with uh, Hoy doing a nice bit of shepherding, puts the ball on its way. Up goes Cook and Cook has marked it and put it through. And that's where he's needed. 4 8, Port Melbourne, Geelong 9 8. That's another goal which puts us uh, six goals behind on a, on a very wet track. On these conditions, can you win it? I think so, it's just that we're playing so badly. Geelong wants to do all the correct things, but Port Melbourne are playing poorly. And if they can come out in the third quarter, that breeze did spring up in the, last, uh, in the second quarter out here before, and I think if we can take advantage of it in the third quarter, we'll make a game of it. I'll let you go now, because Gary Bryce has got a few things to say to you and the other prima donnas, as he calls them. I think he might have Tony. Well, I wouldn't exactly put He knew it was good heroin, and uh, he told his crew to, to, to cut it accordingly, and they didn't cut it enough. And suddenly, there was five people found dead in the vicinity of his home in Stevenson Street. And he, he went, I remember he went down and slapped one of the blokes that was selling it. And he said, you've even killed my hairdresser. I was supposed to get my hair cut tomorrow or the next day. The footy show, and if you're any sort of football follower, you will know the name Fred Cook. A legend in VFA football, Port Melbourne superstar, and... Uh, there's just been a brand new book written about him, The Strife and Times of Fred Cook. We're joined on the show by author Paul Amy and the man himself, Fred Cook. Welcome, fellas. Thank you so Thanks much. Yeah. Well, a little while in coming because uh, a lot of people have uh, wanted this sort of book written about the champion. Paul, how did it come about? Uh, well, Daryl, um, you know, I, I intended this year to write a book of, you know, about some BFA greats, what I was going to call... Yeah, so. generation, but... It's uh, a little bit soft and a little bit, a lot of rules that uh, probably shouldn't be there. Anecdotes in here, mm. but it's also a compelling read because it tells the story of a, uh, a man who's been right up to the top and down to the depths and fighting his way back. And well, brilliantly I, written. I can honestly say I've worn and dined with Prime Ministers, two of them, and I've lived with some of the lowest people on earth in Pentridge Jail, and I've met everyone in between. Most of them are nice people. <laughs> they really are. Yeah, yeah we've all got our frailties. Um, and most importantly, my kids think I'm a good bloke. That's good. Yeah. Well, Paul, you've done a fantastic job. Congratulations on what is a compelling read and a must for not only every footy fan, but every, everyone who likes to, uh, to read about a, uh, well, one of the more famous lives in Australia. I, I think North Melbourne will win, but I want to say this quickly. What? A man who played for Footscray and went on to play for the VFA, a bloke called Fred Cook. The legendary Fred Cook was as big a name in Melbourne when he was playing for Port Melbourne, has a book out written by Paul Amy. I'm t I did the forward to it, but that's not why I'm mentioning it. Uh, if you want to read about a man who has uh, probably inspired the Underbelly, underbelly oh, series, oh. but lived it real. Uh, this ain't a story. This is an incredible journey of Fred Cook who has been uh, ravaged from pillar to post and it is an amazing story of who he's associated with and his fight with the underbelly of society and uh, prevailed in the end. It is an extraordinary read and I just say that because I've read, read a few of these sort of things and they're good but this is about as good as it gets. Right, well get out and get a copy because over a beer or two Samuel has told me some yeah. of those stories. And they are incredible stories. The true stories are always the hardest to believe. I said there'll be a comeback, and I also said that that young kid from Tasmania, Jeff Hayward, would come good. You! You're a genius! You turncoat! You said the best thing ever to come out of Tasmania was Errol Flynn. You said they're so inbred that their aeroplanes have got square wheels and they've got hair under their wings. What a lot of... <laughs> It's a grand old flag, it's a high-flying flag, it's the emblem for me and for you. It's the emblem of the team we love, the team of the red and the blue. Every heart beats true for the red and the blue, and we sing this song.